Although it is the 9th of December as I'm recording this, so... Maybe I've died! I've only had to recently isolate because a child at my nursery tested positive, he is fine. <laughs> and I was only in furlough for two months and that was early the year and financially I was fine. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about what the Doctor Who guy has been up to this year. That's me. I just referred to myself in the third person. I've got a swivel chin. January! Oh, can you remember January? It felt like five hunking years ago, I'll tell ya. I started the ball rolling this year with, oh, it, it's, it's a beautiful video. It's a beautiful video. It's, what, five seconds of me as the Brigadier without a moustache yelling, are you fucking simple? Here is the video. Are you fucking simple? Beautiful, yeah. The next video released was the Bracewell and Orphanage Man short. Now you may be wondering, is that part of Doctor Who Road? Sure, maybe, why not? Why did I make it? To make ma uh, Meticulous Broadcast laugh. Meticulous Broadcast, please subscribe. This is not the last time you'll be hearing his name. <laughs> and lastly in January was the Chibnall mini sketch, the Ood mini sketch, the advert. I wanted to make that just because I didn't re I didn't have enough time to set up what the Ood were, which is the clone troopers, essentially, they played that role. So yes, that was the first bit of Doctor Who Road this year, the official Doctor Who Road, I should say. February! Started February off fun with a radio interview. Yeah. If you didn't hear about this at the time, I was on Insanity Radio. I will have a link to all of this in the description, hopefully, including the full interview, which they have very kindly put on YouTube. It was an interesting experience. I did it at a local university, and I was only really invited because my grandma happens to listen to it, and the host thought it'd be a nice surprise for her, which it was. Wholesome moment. Wholesome moment! Stole that from Tom Skip, anyway. And I just write just random stuff. Nowadays, I'm sort of thinking throughout the day, like, oh, that could be a weird if I put these characters together, or if this person came in, like, oh, it'd be cool if the Joker came in, or this, that, and the other. I go, oh, okay, I can th think this a bit further. The next bit of Doctor Who Guy tomfoolery is not on this channel. It is on the Meticulous Broadcast channel. I played the humble role of God. In his episode, New World, parts one and two, I played the role of God, which, uh, fun fact, I played the role of God, or Notch, in Didgeridooman's series, if you know him, uh, years ago, and so, to bring me back into continuity, military broadcast, hang me back to play the role! Yeah! <laughs> and in February, I crossed 700 subscribers! I was amazed when I looked back this year, because I thought I was on 800 all year, but no, I crossed 700 in February, and that's pretty dope. Wicked. If you were subscribed to me before I was, I hit 700, let me know if you're one of the cool fans. <laughs> in February, I wrapped up Phase 3 with the hour-long, spectacular Rise of the Chip. I will always be proud of this sketch. It is huge, it was an undertaking. Phase 3 was the most ambitious sketch series. Uh, the storytelling and what I managed to accomplish with it, emotions-wise and plot-wise and character-wise, I am amazed that I pulled it off. And you clearly all agree, it's already hit a thousand views. It is beyond that milestone. And it did that under a year. In under a year, that is insane for my sketches. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Also, I won an award, so that's fun, for funniest video for the 11th hour spoof, I believe, in Dr. Blue's Hootuber Awards, which was very kind of him. I was up for a couple of bits, but I actually won one, so that's pretty dope. March was a fairly quiet month. I only released two videos of note, which was the Hartnell and Troughton uh, spoofs. But yes, I did Unearthly Child. Well, don't get shouting with me, young lady. Now tell me why you're following her. We heard a voice call out to you. That doesn't answer my question. And Tomb of the Cybermen. My father regenerated into a bear when I was a young 59-year-old Gallifreyan boy. Beyond that point, life got very weird with him. You can relate, right? And also in March, the only other thing I could cram in was a last minute holiday. Before Britain went into lockdown, <laughs> I managed to go with Gemma to Centre Parks, which is my favourite holiday destination. Uh, I've been many times and will go many, many times in the future. Wholesome. 
Wholesome, wholesome, wholesome. Pictures. Love pictures. I realised like, I'm going to lean this way so I can just have things play here. That'd be a fun thing to do, I think. April! Got lots of things for April here! Starting with the Seventh Doctor spoof of easily my least favourite Seventh Doctor episode of all time, Delta and the Bannerman. I don't smell like cheese. Sorry, that's me. You're not shower? Not as much as I should. Ugh. Me and Gemma are big fans of the Seventh Doctor's era. It's the only Doctor's era, uh, the classic Doctor's era, that we have the entirety of the DVDs for. I'm rambling, but I released Delta and the Bannerman spoof because there is a line in it, uh, in the actual episode, that I, I love riffing on. Me and Gemma say it every once in a while, which is... <clears throat> Where's the guy with the gun gun? I, we hate it. We hate that episode, so I riffed on it. Fuck it. <laughs> Getting away from Doctor Who guy stuff for just one moment. I've got another Gemma thing. We celebrated... Deeply offensive. I'm currently exporting out a mi uh, the Pertwee, Troughton and Joe mini sketch and uploading the black and white version of the stone monoliths at the same time. So my laptop is noisy! Fun behind the scenes thing for you guys, I guess. Yes, getting back to life stuff. My lovely girlfriend, Gemma. Gemma Whittington. Here she is. Look at her. She and I were dating for a year then. It was our one year anniversary. Oh, why did I say that so weird? It was our one year anniversary together. I forget how we celebrated. I forget if we celebrated. Oh, we, I'm sure we celebrated. But I will take this opportunity to say I love you, Gemma. And I will never find anyone better than you. It's true. <laughs> the next video to be released was the Phase 3 trailer. I had finished it and I was proud of it, so I figured Make a trailer for it. Boom. And I'm quite proud of that trailer. It's a good trailer. <laughs> Take a shot every time I say trailer. <laughs> no, you'll die. And you're all probably children. Next, a moment of silence for this video. Right, so we don't have a weapon anymore. Yeah, we've got weapons. Mrs. Boer! Then I released a video similar to this with me talking to the camera because I was INTRODUCING PHASE 4! You thought I was done, fuck you! No, of course it wasn't finished. I had to continue into phase 4. I was very excited because uh, I could update costumes, I could completely change directions. Excuse me, Mr. Leaf Blower? Fuck off! <laughs> it's just so rude, I just want to feel me bitch out! But yeah, anyway, phase 4. It was just a glint in my eye at that point. I had planned it out for the most part. Uh, I need to go back and check how much I stuck to it, actually. Well, it's, Phase 4's not even done! Well, I'm talking about it like it's in the past! It's still going! <laughs> As you are watching this now, you have, well, just a week ago, seen the Silent Monoliths released. Which means we are only two sketches away, sorry I'm swearing, two sketches away from Phase 4 being complete. Very excited, but the two sketches that I'm even yet to start filming on as of recording is daunting. It's a bit scary. But anyway, intro to phase four. Mini sketches and so on. We'll get to get to that. Throughout most of this year, my parents' house, as you probably saw in the mini sketches and such, was going through a lot of building work. Great timing on their part <laughs> to get that started. Um, but I took the opportunity, whilst the conservatory was, as you say, fucked, and I decided to film a short, uh, just a me dicking about in it. Nothing special, moving on. The first Phase 4 mini sketch was released, and it's fairly underwhelming. I thought I'd find you here. In my living quarters, stick to teaching, Chesterfield, because you'd make an awful detective. It shows off the new Hartnell. It shows off the one current appearance of Ian Chesterton. I should, should have probably used him. <laughs> and there's a funny uh, thing at the end with Susan and Tennant. That's it. <laughs> the best it does is start to set up the Tennant mini sketch, but we'll get to that. And then, to my shock, at the end of April, more or less, I crossed 800 subscribers in what? Fucking two months! I met, like, two months! Thank you to everyone who subscribed in that very short amount of time. It'll be a few months yet until we reach another milestone, but we still we do it. We do it. We'll get to that. Moving on to May. May. I released more mini sketches. Troughton. That was rude. Pertwee. The readings are clear as day on the screen. But of course I know. I, I, I just want to see if you're improving. I do so care about your growth. 
Tom Baker. Come along, Doctor, you're not fit. Not fit? Not fit? Of course I'm fit, all systems go! Peter Davison. Hello, Doctor. The Master! And Colin Baker, all in that month. <laughs> American companion screaming panic! Uh, Trouton's, you know, short and sweet, sets off Trouton living with uh, his companions. Uh, I wanted more companion inclusion, more than just one sketch. Pertwee's sets up his place at Unit. I really wanted Unit to be a proper thing this time. I only really hinted at it in Phase 3, so it's here now, especially with the new Brigadier look, which I introduced in Rise of the Chip. Tom Baker's bears including, especially because it is um, written by a particular broadcast. I had to get writing stuff. I love his writing. It's, he is such an out there and balls to the wall. Uh, approach to writing, and I knew I had to give him Tom Baker and Tennant as well. well. I'll get to that because they can be so out there, and I know he writes them so well. We'll, we'll, we'll get more to his writing later, but his Tom ba Baker sketch, if you haven't seen it, wow. <laughs> then Davison's mini sketch is fairly forgettable, admittedly. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I think I was just setting up his and Anthony's dynamic, which uh, <laughs> that's really how. That's how I approach the mini-sketches, I approach them more in a setting up sort of way. Whereas uh, Meticulous Broadcast approaches them in a more out there, bombastic way, which is why I like his style. And then Colin Baker's, uh, I quite like Colin Baker's, it's just Perry hiding from him. And as someone pointed out in the comments, it's very samey to their dynamic in Phase 3, which is, you know, Colin just wants to strangle her. <laughs> so, because uh, of that comment, it would be here. Uh, that comment, because I can't remember who put it. Uh, I changed it. I, I fixed that in at the beginning of Doctor Who Road the Musical, but we'll get to that. Aside from the mini-sketches, at the very end of the month, May 31st, what did I do? I moved into the flat! <laughs> Look at this! It's, it's mine! And Gemma's. It's ours! We moved out! How cool is that? At the ripe old age of... Well, to, to, as you were watching this, I will have just turned 22. We'll get to that. But I am 21, and I live in a flat. It is very nice. It is a lovely flat, not even too far away from where I live, where I lived, my parents' house. I consider it the perfect size for me. Um, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Best decision. Oh yeah! Moving here. Although I do miss all the rooms that I could film in previously. Yeah, and the garden. Oh, filming in a garden. I miss it. June, June. First of all, more mini sketches. McCoy, but we, we have, the, have people the people for you. For you. Ace Demolitioner. Ace Demolitioner. Is that in time? McGann. Davis. Turlo. What on earth were you dreaming about? Heaven. <laughs> what are we doing? Eccleston. I was told you were acting strange at a party, but I just assumed you were off your nut. Well, uh, Rose Tyler. Um, who's to say I'm not now? And thought of that, had you? Tent. Billy Piper. I... I really want to shag how much. Oh, that's a shame. I thought she'd be cheap. Uh, McCoy's uh, is just an advert. I thought it'd be quite funny for them to have a... Uh, the most thing I wanted to set up for McCoy and Ace was just how close they were. Their bond is rock solid. Nothing can really shake it. Um, obviously, my McCoy and Ace love coming through there. It's short, it's sweet, it's funny. <coughs> oh, pardon. <laughs> McGann's... I just wanted to set up his audio adventures thing, and I'm quite proud of that one. That's a good one. Eccleston, I, you know, you've got to check in with the only survivor from Phase fucking 3. It's got a great opening shot, one of my favourite opening shots with the split screen. Wow. Sets up his and, his and Rose's dynamic, which becomes very important, by the way. Not yet, but it does. And Tenants, the other one written by Meticulous Broadcast. Fuck me, there is, is, is in no way surprising that that one has the most views out of them, all the mini sketches. Some usually it'll be the first one, because that's when they click on the playlist. But it, it, Tenant's mini sketches is a good couple hundred views away from the others. And yeah, it's funny. It's really good. I, I love that mini sketch. It is. Mwah. Also, my Tenant hair in that one, the best I will ever get it, if we're being honest. Also, my hair right now. Gemma cut this the other day, do you like it? My, my The floor is still covered in hair because it won't get hoovered up. But otherwise, it, my hair looks great. My lust for phase trailers didn't stop. Oh, you thought it stopped. I released a phase two and a phase one trailer. I figured as phase three had one, make more. Again, I'm very proud of these trailers. I, I, in hindsight, 
I'm not proud of phase one or two. Not really. Well, phase one, definitely not. It has a cringe value to it. You know, it's interesting to go back and see Doctor Who Road's humble beginning. And phase two is all over the place, but make trailers for them to make it all neat and tidy. Yes. <laughs> ah. Oh yes, also in June, I created the Doctor Who Guy Discord. A lot of you watching may already be in it. It's fairly active, and I'm quite proud of it, actually. We've got, what, like 30 members now? It's just pretty good. July! Did somebody say July? I did. Mini sketches. I finished them off. Matt Smith's. You see this? This is me putting my foot down. This is it. You see it? Foot on the floor. Is on the floor. Foot is down on the floor. Oh, get to the point. It's just comedy. It's it's all right. It's not bad. It'll do. Capaldi's space time. These are all places that I bind your mother. I'm quite. I, I quite like that one. It's very different. All green screeny and fun and short and sweet. And then I revealed to all of you that I moved <laughs> in the Whitaker mini sketch. Now, yes, which is one of the creepier ones in because it wakes up with Whitaker in bed, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and that's probably the most we've seen of Whitaker this phase, actually, isn't it? Look, Whitaker needed a break after I turned her evil. I figured she needs a good a good rest before I do anything else with her. <laughs> that was the mini sketches wrapped up. Then I just had to make the sketches, but luckily I released the three doctors. <laughs> speaking very quickly because it didn't take me long to film to be honest it only took me like three or four weeks like just a month to make and I'll, I'll say this now first of all meticulous broadcast again nailed the writing of that one I didn't have to tweak it that much although I did because <laughs> I can't help myself but um, it's an amazing sketch and it is the most fun I've had filming a sketch. I I'm annoyed that that's the one with the least amount of views. Like, it's still crossed 500, but come on, it deserves one. Fun fact, it was originally called The Three Actors and I made the mistake of having that bit in the credits. <laughs> I put the three actors in the credits instead of the three doctors because I'm a big old dumb boy. I also started the Doctor Who Road clips. Uh, something quite fun I decided to do. Uh, I was inspired by the official Doctor Who, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. Inspired by them, releasing snippets of their stuff, so I thought it would be quite fun. I'm quite happy with it, and I will be continuing them into the future. On to August, I released the first Doctor Who Road Confidential. <laughs> which I didn't really continue. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know, I did it for three Doctors and I did it for the musical, but the problem is I don't have enough drive to make it and I don't always have enough to say to warrant the other video. Like, the three Doctors obviously spoke about me moving, that was the main difference, and obviously talking to Meticulous Broadcast about how he wrote it, and the musical obviously had all the music aspects to it, it had a lot to it, but from there... There wasn't much. I don't know, you, you all did seem to enjoy it for the most part, so that's good. Also, something fun happened in August. <laughs> I'm an ace, motherfucker! There happened to be a small convention. Yeah, I, I don't have it on me, but I also met Katie Manning. The lovely Joe Grant, and oh, they were both so good. Me and Gemma decided, fuck it, we want to meet Sophie Aldrin and Katie Manning and all of this. And it was a great event, very small and very safe. They did very well to keep it um, COVID safe. Awkward at times because we didn't know when the pictures were being taken so we were just sort of waiting for like an hour just sat on a chair. <laughs> but uh, no, it was brilliant and I got this picture with a... <laughs> Thank you fandom events for that. Amazing. Also there was a kid dressed as Pertwee and it was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Also in August I re-released Dandy and the Bastard. Um, do they have a salad? No, don't care. Carry on. Question. Let me watch this. Which you may have seen already on Meticulous Broadcast channel uh, in 2019. It was one of the videos I filmed uh, in November, December time of 2019. He didn't want it on his channel because it didn't really fit his content, so I re-uploaded it on mine because we both still fucking love it. It's hilarious. <laughs> right, here's something that's exciting. Uh, I actually wrote one of Meticulous Broadcast's episodes. I wrote uh, a two-parter called Genesis. Uh, I, I'm very proud of it. If you haven't watched it, go and check out his channel. It, it will be there and it will be amazing. The next sketch came out not too long after the Three Doctors too, only like a month after because 
It only took me about a month and a half to make. Doctor Who wrote the musical. I'm still standing after all this time. Picking up the pieces of my life without you on my mind. Yeah, boy, oh, I'm still standing. What is there to say? It is the most viewed currently uh, of Phase 4. Very happy with how it turned out. It changed a lot as I made it. And you all seem to enjoy it and like the twists and the turns and uh, all the song sequences. So that is brilliant. And because it did so well in Phase 5, if I get to that, uh, I would very much like to do another one. Uh, another musical. Moving on to September! Part 2 of Genesis. Yes, written by me. Part 2 of Genesis released uh, on the Meticulous Broadcast channel. Very proud of it. Yes. I released the first sort of mid uh, mini sketch, The Brigadier Returns. <sighs> oh, I'm back. Bloody hell. Because um. I realised at the end of Doctor Who Wrote the Musical, it wasn't made clear that the Brigadier is fine. And most importantly, and what people took away from it, was John Pertwee being fired from UNIT. Very exciting stuff. I will be continuing that. I also released the Doctor Who Road Showcase video from 2015 to 2020. Everything I had made up until that point was included. I love that video. It's currently my channel trailer. It's currently at the beginning of the Doctor Who Road playlist. Shows off everything. Five years of work, guys. And also in September, 10 years on YouTube. 10 years since I created the damn channel. Very exciting. Didn't do anything to celebrate. Thanks to the Doctor Who guy Discord, I was offered a place by the very nice Robin Hope, I will call him. I forget if he wants me to use his real name. He is part of the Odyssey Doctors, which is uh, in its beginnings at the moment. And we'll get back to my inclusion of it, but I was offered a place as their 28th, 28th, incarnation of their Doctor. It's completely separate from Doctor Who canon, from the TV show. It's an exciting project and I'm very happy to be a part of it. So thank you, uh, Mr. Robin Hope, Ginger Doctor, as you are known. I was involved in more meticulous broadcast shit. Last Day on Earth, part one. I played, for the first time, but not the last, President Archelius, that asshole. Into October. We're in October now. I, I, I launched the Patreon. Uh, part 2 of Last Day of Earth was released on Meticulous Broadcast Channel as I once again played the villainous President Dark Elias. And then, with the Odyssey Doctors, I well, there was a slot open and I put myself forward. So now I'm the seventh Doctor in the <laughs> Odyssey Doctors universe. I voiced uh, John Anglin, a very minor character in JTS Originals Minecraft episode The Alcatraz Enigma. Back to me though, back to Doctor Who Road. Super Smash Doctors was released! <laughs> Good fun sketch. It was um, an interesting one to make. Um, a lot went into it. Very proud of it. It continued Eccleston's story, finalised Eccleston's story in a lot of ways from Phase 3. It started the Tennant and Smith rivalry. They were always best friends in the old road. So I figured I'd put some tension in there as Tennant is more of a Asshole now. <laughs> Sorry to the real David Tennant. I also played Yim Taragoth in Planet Zero's Minecraft Adventures. Uh, that's a character I think I'll be playing again. I also played Graham O'Brien in Mondas Productions Figure Adventures. Discovery of the Sharma. Uh, yes, thank you Mondas for letting me play a character. Very kind of you. November, November, we're nearing the end of the year. I released my first Odyssey Doctor audio, Twisted Mind. Ah, Earth. <laughs> One day I'll figure out what draws me here. You've been here before then? Oh, more times than I've stepped on my own planet. I do love it though. You all seem to really enjoy it and we're pumped for it. I've been desperately trying to make episode two. <laughs> oh God, writing these episodes is harder than it has any right to be. I'm used to more visual stuff. I, I don't, oh, audio's hard. That's why I want to make fan films, but I can't. I don't know how people do it. Like, I love a good fan film, but there's so few that I like. like it's either the acting that weighs it down, the writing that weighs it down, um, but to all that make them, for example, um, Dominic, the Purple Doctor, him and DW2012, their fan films, I don't like them. <laughs> I have my reasons for not liking them, but flipping kudos to you for actually making them for all these years. Well done. Same to everyone that makes fan films. Well done, because I can't. Because I'm on my own. Ah, yeah. I also made an appearance on the Hit or Miss podcast. I reviewed Death of the Doctor, the Sarah Jane Adventures episode, 
uh, well, crossover episode with the Matt Smith Doctor, the 11th Doctor. I also recorded with Who Game Shows, the Hootuber, Chase, which came out um, by the time uh, this is released on Christmas. Alongside Dominic, who, the Purple Doctor, who is the Chaser, Trilby Reviews, Mr. Tardis Reviews, uh, that was fun, and a good couple others. And yeah, that was brilliant fun. Although, oh my god, if you watch it, you will see how bad my knowledge of Doctor Who is. Like, general knowledge, I got ya! I got ya, mate! General knowledge, easy! I'm doing it, mate! But oh my god, the questions that were thrown my way! How was I supposed to know? At the end of the month as well, I released Eccleston's vlog. This ain't my bed. I figured we should proper, you know, tune in to Eccleston and his life how he's doing and I thought that would be a fun new way of doing it, his him in a vlog style thing. And it also set up the silent monoliths. We're in December now boys! I crossed 900 subscribers! Yeah! In the span of a year I've gone up 200 subscribers and thank you all so, so much for that. It is so amazing to see this stupid little project of mine actually take off. I then played Graham O'Brien again. Uh, Graham, uh, Graham. I then played Graham again in um, the Mondas Productions adventure, Awakening of the Paradigm. Love the Paradigm Daleks. They deserve to come back. Come on now, let's be honest. The Silent Monoliths came out on the 24th of December. <laughs> Christmas Eve, I gave you all the next sketch of Phase 4. Oh. I am nervous but excited to see what you all think of this sketch. Um, very excited, so I won't harp on it too much. But I'm also releasing a black and white, if you haven't seen this, a black and white uh, version of the sketch, because I figured with the lighting it would look the most gorgeous in black and white. So if you look in the description of the actual sketch, you will find an unlisted link to the black and white version, which you can feel free to check out. I also released, as I have done the last two years, a Christmas music video. In 2018, I did um, a mime lip sync key video to Winter Wonderland by Doris Day. I then, in 2019, released the behemoth of a video where I got all the doctors to do their own renditions of different songs. And then this year, I stuck it to the one song, which was... what was it? <laughs> White Christmas, of course. Love the song. And it was a nice, calm video. I didn't want it to be too bombastic. I just wanted it to be relaxing and I'm very proud of it. This month I've also recorded, and it should be released on Patreon, uh, not on my Patreon, on Who Game Shows Patreon, a five minute podcast with Who Game Shows, again, okay, the same guy with The Chase. Not my decision to make an exclusive, that's him. And then, obviously, the Hootuber The Chase was released! Uh, and I'm sure you, a lot of you have watched it, and you saw how bad I am. That's it. And then this video, this is the last video to come out this year. Uh, if there's any small ones that come out before this, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't made them yet. And 31st of December, it's my birthday. I'm 22 today, as you watch this, so happy birthday to me. And thank you for watching this video. I'm very excited for what 2021 will bring me. Hopefully the Covid vaccine goes out, uh, we can all go out to conventions and stuff again. If there is MCM London Comic Cons, you bet your fucking ass I will go to that. <laughs> I am desperate to go to a proper convention again. So, that's something I will leave you with, if you ever want to meet me in person. There, you'll probably find me there, keep, keep in the Twitters, I will tell you where I go. Um, Sketch-wise, I've got two more to come out. Oh, let me tell you, they are going to be big. Whether they will outdo Moffat's Revenge and Rise of the Chip? No idea. <laughs> but, it will be big, that's no doubt. Thank you for watching, uh, thank you for subscribing, and I will see you all in the new year. Thank you.